In this lesson, we're going to begin discussing exactly how the market works. And the best part about understanding how the market works is the level of predictability that exists within the market that most people just simply aren't aware of. That's what becomes the foundation of understanding how to trade the markets. When you understand that there is a level of predictability within the markets and also understand how to identify where those patterns are, where those price movements are that allow you to use those very patterns and price movements as predictors of what the next likely move is in the market, that's at a point in which you can begin to find success trading the markets. The first question we need to answer is, are the markets random? The answer is yes and no. So minute by minute, of course, there's randomness to the markets, even by 10 minutes or half an hour or hour time frames, there certainly is random activity in the markets that can't be predicted. However, what I'm going to show you is by using time and price together, there is a predictability to the markets. It's not 100%. Nothing is 100%. The markets are based on probabilities. So as long as you're able to put the probability of success in your favor, that's how you become a successful trader. And as we look at a lot of charts, you're going to understand how time and price will come together. And once you understand how to put time and price together, that's at the point in which you'll be able to visually identify a specific activity happening on a chart where you can look at it and say, the next likely move is X. And by the time you're finished with this course, that's exactly what you're going to be able to do. Markets trade to important places. That goes hand in hand with time and price. What I'm gonna show you throughout the course in various different charts that you're going to see why a market will trade to a particular area and then back off or accelerate through or go sideways. And you're going to begin to understand why the market traded to that area. It's going to become very clear. It's going to be much more understandable, even just from a visual perspective. One thing I can assure you is when you see some of the evidence that I'm going to present as to why the markets do what they do, you'll never look at a chart the same way again. And you'll become fascinated with the understanding that you can actually predict with a high degree of certainty what the next move in the market will be. Again, not 100%, but it will be about 70, 75 maybe even 80% of the time, you will be able to predict the next likely move in a market. And keep in mind, everything I'm going to show you throughout this course can be applied to any chart. It doesn't have to be the S&P E-mini. It can be a stock. It can be gold. It can be silver. It can be crude oil. It can be anything under the sun. It doesn't matter if it has candlesticks and if it has a chart, you can plot what the next likely move is going to be with a high degree of certainty. With that understanding comes another important area, which is knowing where you're wrong. One of the grave mistakes that traders make is not understanding where they're wrong. They enter a trade and it goes against them way too far and for way too long. You have to understand where you're wrong. You're not going to be right 100% of the time. So therefore, we have to be able to identify a specific price where we're wrong. If the market trades to a specific price or closes below on a 10-minute chart or an hourly chart, below a certain number, then we have to know that we're wrong if that situation does occur. And we'll get into this when we look at the charts. But understanding where you're wrong is a critical critical component in trading. It's the traders that don't understand where they're wrong, let a bad trade get out of hand. They're the ones that let one trade wipe out five or 10 good ones. We're not in that business. Speaking of business, trading is a business. It has to be treated as a business. You show up in the morning to go to work. You have a plan. You have tools, which are charts and a calculator and other tools that we'll talk about throughout the course. You have inventory. Your inventory is your capital. You're allocating capital in order to utilize that to create more capital. That's exactly what a business does. Once you can understand 
that treating trading as a business is the only way you can look at it, then you'll be able to find success. We only take the trades that make sense. We take the trade setups where the probabilities are far in excess in our favor. When we enter a trade, you're going to enter a trade being 100% certain that that trade is going to work in your favor. However, you must also understand that you cannot win 100% of the time, but confidence in entering a trade is extremely important. So each and every time we enter a trade, it's because a certain set of conditions existed. And those set of conditions, a high percentage of the time, produce a certain result. The other percentage of the time, they won't produce the result and will lose. And that's also part of business. Every business deal isn't fantastic. Every business deal doesn't go the way the owner or the business intended it to go. But going into it, everybody had good intentions. Going into a trade, you must be 100% sure that you're correct in your assessment that you should take the trade. And that's where we gain the confidence from, and you will gain that confidence throughout this course. And we're also gonna take a look at what I call the better chart. There's another way to analyze the ES contract, the S&P E-mini futures contract, not for trading, but for analyzing. We're gonna use another chart that I'll show you that is a little bit more precise than the S&P E-mini contract for analyzing purposes. So as a chartist, as a trader, as a technical analyst, I want the chart that's gonna give me the best set of data possible. So throughout the course, we'll use two different charts. We'll use the S&P E-mini chart and we'll use the other chart, which I'll reveal shortly. We'll use two charts for the same purpose and you'll understand when I get there why we're doing that. Now let's focus on the time and price component more specifically the time component. The market consists of numbers. Everything in the market is based on mathematics. Most everything in our lives is based on mathematics, one way or the other. The markets are no different. However, in trading, there are some very specific and important numbers that repeat over and over and over again. And this is one of those things where I said you're never going to look at the market the same way again, and here's where it begins. We're going to talk about which numbers are extremely important and that come up in the market over and over and over again. And why does that happen? One of the reasons is because we're humans. And whether it's computers trading the markets or people trading the markets, people still program computers, and human nature never changes as humans, as people. We do the same thing over and over and over again. And that's what translates to the market, the repeatability. And that's where we can gain an edge. That's where we can gain an advantage. And where most people have no idea is the time component. So let's take a look at some important numbers. First up, the number three. Why is the number three important? Well, it's not that it's important to the market but it's an important to our lives and therefore it translates to the market. Think for a second if you were to knock on a door. How many times would you knock on the door? Three. Most people knock three times. The number three is an extremely important number as it relates to the Bible. A triangle has three sides. There are three musketeers, the three stooges. The list goes on and on. I urge you to just go over to Google and type in the importance of the number three and you'll see a litany of information and you can do the research yourself. But for the purposes of this course, you're gonna have to take my word for it for now that the number three is important and I'll show you exactly why as we go along. Even more so is the number seven. Same thing, go ahead and do your homework. It shows up in the Bible. It shows up throughout our lives. The number seven is very prevalent. There's seven days in a week. God rested on the seventh day. All these things repeat over and over again. They have importance as it relates to candlesticks on the chart. I'm going to show you why these numbers repeat over and over and over again. And then I'm going to show you how to use it to your advantage. The number 10. 7 plus 3 is 10. Ten's the first double digit number. There's a $10 bill. Why isn't there a $9 bill or an $11 bill? 10 is an important number. It's an easy number. It's a round number. We count in tens. 
10's important. 14 is important. Why? Because it's 7 twice. You'll see throughout the course, 7 is extremely important. So any multiple of 7 is important, like 21. There are other numbers that are important. There's numbers higher than 21, and there's also other numbers in between. So for example, 12 can be an important number. Why? Because it's a multiple of 3. You'll start to see as we go throughout the course and look at the charts why this is and how you can apply it to your trading. The detail of the importance of the numbers 3 and 7, I do urge you to research and read on your own. It is fascinating, interesting information. The other numbers are multiples of 3 and 7, so you'll see very clearly why that's important on the charts. Let's start to get familiar with counting candlesticks. Here's where I need you to begin to get familiar with the fact that these numbers are important. Let's start at the left part of the chart and just count from various points on the chart and throughout the course I'm going to get way deep into this stuff and explain where is a pivot high, where is a pivot low, what is a tail candle? What is an exhaustion bar? What is tremendous volume? What is not good volume? Where is there conviction in the market? Where is a bottom? Why is a bottom there? Why is a top there? These are all the things we're going to go over and you're going to begin to understand how to analyze and unpack and pick apart the markets and understand how they work. That's the point. You need to understand how they work. When you do, you'll have a leg up on all the competition. Who's the competition? All the other traders. So starting at the left at the pivot high, right here on this particular chart, at this particular point in time, this is a pivot high. So we count the first candle from the pivot high. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and we had a trend change on the seventh candle. Sometimes the trend change will come in on eight. We will go down in this case for seven, and then we'll start the other direction. I will show you how to identify when to expect a trend change. This is just the beginning. This is one component of many. But first we have to understand the time aspect. Because here we're on a 10 minute chart. So the time translated on the 10 minute chart from what we just went over is about an hour. So the market went down for about an hour. That makes sense. Let's take the low from where the market sold off and count to the next high. Counting the low, counting the final candle on the low, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Trend change after twenty-one. Multiple of seven. Pretty slick, isn't it? Now from every low and every high you're not going to be able to identify a trend change. But what I'm going to do throughout the course is help you to understand where and when you can identify the probability of a trend change. Now here's where we're going to add another component into looking at time and understanding when a trend change is likely to occur. See this little guy here? That's known as a doji candle. And there's doji candles and what I like to call pseudo doji candles and that's like the one next to it. It's not quite a doji candle and a doji candle represents when price opened and closed at the same level within the candle within this time frame. This is a 10 minute candle. So even when we have what I like to call a pseudo doji candle which is like the one next to it where it's not necessarily a doji but it's close enough and it generally will act in the same manner. So let me explain how we use this. Let's go ahead and count some more candles. Let's start at this doji candle which happened to be a low and we'll use that as number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After the seventh candle we had a doji candle. That is generally a sign of a trend change. Not all the time but a lot of the time. When they occur at specific points on a chart, for example, at highs and lows, they could be short-term highs, they could be longer-term highs. In this case, I would classify this as a short-term high because it's in the middle of another range, but still acted as a high nonetheless, albeit temporary. Let's continue on. We're going to get more into this 
We're just getting our beak wet. Let's count from another high. Let's use this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 represented a trend change. There's 10 again. Interesting. Let's continue on. Let's use this as a pivot low. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Remember the number 14 is important and we had a trend change on the next candle. Pretty slick. Let's start again. Let's go to another pivot low. Let's use this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then a trend change. Temporary, but a trend change nonetheless. Now, of course, it's not gonna work every time. Sometimes the market will move in other numbers. Five candles in a row, eight candles in a row. Of course, that's gonna happen, but we're interested and when we can narrow down what the next likely scenario is for the market. So let me give you an example. When you look at this one in the middle and take this pivot low, this is called a pivot low, it's a doji candle, and we went up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we put in another doji. That's an area where a trader can be looking to play the short side and throughout the course, I will tell you exactly how you would know where you're wrong and that stop, if you will, the stop loss order would be extremely tight in this case. So this would be a trade as an example. And by the way, I'm just scratching the surface. If you're confused, please don't be. We're going to unpack this and understand in full exactly everything that you need to know in order to fully trade the market, fully understand everything about the numbers, how the charts trade, what the other important items are that are important on the charts. We're just getting started with the charts. But you'll learn why after this doji candle, that would be an area that you could say, I'm willing to take a short trade because of this setup. And in this case, in only 20 minutes, that was a four point trade, something like that. That's a good trade for a 20 minute trade. But of course, the ones we want really are the ones where we're buying down here and we're selling up here. That's the trade we want. And there's no difference in the setups on the smaller trades or the bigger trades. You'll be able to identify both. So the purpose of this lesson was for you to understand the numbers behind the candles, the numbers behind the market, the fact that the market moves by time and price. And this was really focused on the time. So now that we have the foundation of time, we can begin to move to other aspects of how the market trades and works and how it can work in your favor.